Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, YouTube family, viewers from all over. Merry Christmas, St. Paul Christian Fellowship family. Merry Christmas to all of those who know him and who are celebrating him, his coming. We don't know exactly if he came on Christmas Day or on December the 25th, but we do know that he came. And that's all that really should matter is that he came. And what should really matter to you is that he's coming again. And that's the blessing. So Merry Christmas to you. Happy holidays to you all who are viewing. And uh, Pastor Antonio Willard here with my trusted right hand man, Deacon Carl Joe. We're here to bring y'all Yule tidings. We're here to bring y'all some good news. And the good news is, is that he came. He came he came as a baby. Now he's going to come back as a king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He's coming back as a judge and he's coming back now as an adult. He will not be a baby this time, but this had to happen because this is how God orchestrated it. And this is how uh, in history, uh, a part of creation took place with uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus being the baby. Uh, that was born of a virgin, a, a miracle in itself, a miracle by itself, is that uh, there was no sexual intercourse, there was no intimacy between Joseph and Mary. He was the firstborn, he was of the first of their children, and he was uh, born of a virgin. And so that by itself, you know, I've been dealing with this creation encounter, that by itself, he entered creation, he entered history, as a baby, as a human, and it was a virgin birth. She was a virgin still. She, she, she had not had a sexual intercourse or intimacy with Joseph, and that by itself is God's unlimited power. And so we're here at St. Paul. We're here at 2238 Courtney Avenue in the lovely city of North Virginia, 23504. We'd love for you to come and worship with us and experience God with us as we celebrate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit on any Sunday, any given Sunday, like football, NFL, the National Fake League, any given Sunday, come and worship with us and fellowship with us. Come here and uh, we'll celebrate God and uh, have a good time in the Lord with fellowship and worship. And we get out. We, we're here from 11 until 1230, no later than one o'clock sometimes. And on Wednesday nights, we're here from 7 to 8. And uh, Sunday school is every other Sunday. And that's from like 9 until 1030. And so we're here. We're here. And so we'd love for you to come and fellowship and worship with us, whether you're coming from the Richmond area or whether you're coming from the North Carolina area. We're here in the 757 uh, cities in Norfolk. And we'd love to have you here. So I want today to do a Christmas piece concerning his unlimited power. Now, we don't know what his ultimate power is because we can't even fan of his unlimited power, but we can talk about his unlimited power a little bit. And, and then on some, some terms, you can speculate because he is so awesome in his power. He's Jehovah El Shaddai, the beastie one, the one that is more than enough, the all-sufficient one. So today, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, his unlimited power. So I'm going to read from Isaiah 43. In verse 7, it has a verse here because I've been talking about the creation encounter. Started at Genesis, trying to work through those first five words of Genesis uh, pertaining to those who are skeptics, agnostic, disbelievers, non-believers, uh, haters, whatever, uh, naturalists, humanists, uh, environmentalists, uh, evolutionist, Darwinist, you know, trying to speak truth into those five words in the beginning, God. Take a pause, take a deep breath. <gasps> Created. And uh, so here in Isaiah 43, verse 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. And he's not just talking about the human race. This is his unlimited power. He's talking about all creation because, again, we can't talk about his ultimate power. We won't even know what that is. Even resurrection is, is in his unlimited power because you think about his ultimate power, it would just, you know, I, it would just blow us away. His, his, his unlimited power blow you away. 
that'll blow you away by itself. And so let's just talk a little bit about that, uh, you know, because uh, again, I'm not trying to be a scholar or a theologian sitting here. Just want to share with you uh, in these words. And so uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26, God brings out their host by number. He's talking about the stars, the galaxies. He calls them all by name. Doesn't that sound familiar to verse 7 in Isaiah 43? Everyone who is called by my name. Watch this whom I have created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. It's not just talking about one specific gender uh, like he or him. It's talking about all of his creation, uh, male, female, uh, woman, boy, uh, and girl, uh, and male. And so, um, so the question is asked here in his unlimited power, why don't the stars fall down? A child may ask that question, but so does an astronomer, and they both get essentially the same answer. A mysterious power or energy upholds everything and pre prevents our cosmos from collapsing into chaos. Have you ever thought about that? Period. Have you ever thought about what holds up <clears throat> the universe? Well, I had to go to Colossians to see and, and, and get, a, get a look at uh, what Colossians would say about that. In Colossians, and there's a verse of scripture here I need to find real quick that kind of tells us, um, you know, who, who, this, who this power is, who this unlimited power is. And, and, and it lets us know that if we, if we understand this, uh, then we can kind of understand who Jesus is. Jesus is this unlimited power. He's, he's this power that has made all humanity, created all things, and all things are held up according to him. It's, it's, it's held up according to his character. It's held up according to, you know, he can speak something and, and it, it is there, it's held up. And so, um, let me see, let me get my place real quick. I should have had this, I should have had this and already established. Yeah, it's chapter three of Colossians and It's chapter three of Colossians and all right. I don't see it. It's, it's one. Okay. It's chapter one, verse fifteen. Okay, it's Colossians one, verse fifteen, and this is what I was looking for because I was looking in the wrong chapter. All right. So in chapter one of Colossians in verse 15, it says these words, here it is. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created that are in the heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. It goes on to talk about him being the head of the church, the body of Christ, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn. I shared that with you guys. He's virgin birth born from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So he is even, his unlimited power even deals with the resurrection. But there, in, that, in, in those particular verses, tell you that he holds all things together. And so that's your answer. That would be the answer to a child or to an astronomer as to why or how is everything held up in its place and prevented from chaos and collapsing into, um, you know, eternity. So Hebrews chapter one, verse three tells us that it is Jesus who upholds all things by the word of his power. There it is. He is the source of all the energy there is, whether explosive potential packed inside an atom 
or the steaming kettle on the kitchen stove. That energy is not simply a mindless force. No, God is the personal power who created everything out of nothing. I've been trying to talk about that through those first five words of Genesis chapter one, how he took everything out of non-existent and made it exist. And so including the stars, Genesis chapter one, there it is. Isaiah 40, verse 26, we just read it. Jesus is the one, watch this, God is the one with his unlimited power who divided the Red Sea and delivered the Israelites from the Egyptian bondage. In Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 through 22, we'll see that there. He is the one who brought past, the Father is the one who brought past the virgin birth of Jesus. Luke chapter 1, verses 34 through 35. And who raised him from the dead and conquered death. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. Our God, the one and only true God has the power to answer prayer, to meet our needs and to change our lives. And so when life problems are baffling, when you've, you're faced with some Red Sea impossibility, call upon the wonder working God who upholds all things. And remember that with our almighty God, nothing is impossible. So that's just a taste. That's just a taste of his unlimited power. We can go throughout the whole Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 22, and you will see this unlimited power that God possesses concerning humanity, concerning his creation, period, overall. And so it is a splendid thing to understand and to know that God the Father, in his loving, kind heart, had compassion on humanity uh, when the four parents failed. When Adam and Eve failed, God already had a plan. He already used his unlimited power by uh, sharing with us in Genesis uh, how he would defeat the enemy, the adversary. It's in there, it's in Genesis, and uh, through a woman. And it was actually through Mary. Uh, you know, it was talking about Eve at the time, but it was actually talking about Mary and that she would have this baby. And so he came to us. He came to us to love on us, to forgive us for our sins. Watch this. Not only to love us and forgive us, but to restore us, to reconcile, have a reconciliation. He wanted a relationship with us. He still is looking for you to have a relationship with him right now. Listen. He has the power to conquer all your addictions. I don't care what it is that you may be facing, whatever challenge, whatever you're going through. If you're on drugs and you want to get off, all you got to do is call on his name. But you got to be sincere when you confess your sins. When you repent and ask God to forgive you for your sins, guess what? He'll do it. He will do it. But your, your heart has to be sincere. Alcoholism. He'll, listen, pornography. He can cure any sin, anything, and that's the root issue. Listen, there's always a root issue to what's going on with you. I don't care what it is. If you say you were molested or you was raped back in the days when you was a young child and now you're homosexual or you're a lesbian or whatever, and you try to put that blame on that, you can't do that. I'm sorry. I wait for the amens to die down. You just can't do that because that's not so. That means that there was a tragedy that took uh, an event that happened in your life that messed your life up. But if you call on the name of Jesus, I guarantee you he can heal you, he can deliver you, he can make you a whole person, whether you are male or female. Listen, because he didn't make no mistake. You were created in his image. I just read it to you. You were created in his image, male and female. You're created in his image. And don't blame it on God. God made you that way. That's a lie from the pits of hell. He didn't. He made you a male or a female. That's what he made you. Now, so we want to, you know, blame somebody. We want to blame something. And so we'll blame him. But listen, I'm telling you this morning, we are dealing with someone who loves us, who have unlimited power. I mean, reserved for us that can bless our lives, bless our marriages when our marriages are on the brink, bless our health when we have cancer or 
uh, diabetes or high blood pressure. And we don't know if we're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. God can stop all that. He can stop time. He tells time what to do. That's his unlimited power. He tells the seasons when to come. Now, we don't even can't even tell the seasons apart because guess what? It may be 60 degrees in North of Virginia today. So that'll feel like a spring day at Christmas time. I wait for the amens to die down. That's his unlimited power. Again, I told you in the beginning of the onset, we can't talk about his ultimate power. We don't even know what that is. But he has given us glimpses and he's given us a taste of his unlimited power. Listen, when Jesus died at Calvary for your sins, he laid in the tomb for three days. But guess what? After the third day, he got up and the Bible says with all power in his hand. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He has this unlimited power that even raised him from the dead. He was dead. He was literally, he was literally, physically, emotionally, mentally, he was dead. He was dead. He was dead like when folk pass away. And I know a lot of y'all are suffering on today because you've lost loved ones. Right here recently, you've lost loved ones. And I am so sorry for your loss and your hurt and, you, and the sorrow and pain that you're going through right now, but God can heal that too. This unlimited power that I'm telling you about, listen, he can come in and you'll never forget that person, of course, whether it was a husband, a wife, a spouse, whether it was a child, whether it was anybody that you love, the mother or father, you'll never forget those people, but he can give you peace. That's that unlimited power in the midst of your emotions and your mental. He'll give you peace. He'll keep you in your right mind. Yes, he will, if you would only believe. And so that's that has something to do with this unlimited power. So on Christmas, on Christmas, because we're celebrating his entering into history, heaven entering into history, and him coming into humanity as a baby, as the savior, because, you know, Joseph had to call his name. The angel came to his stepfather and said, you, you got to call his name Jesus. Jesus means to save his people. And it's not just talking about the Jews. It's talking about anybody that would believe in him. John 3, 16. This is that unlimited power. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, put your name there, would believe in him, would not perish, but have eternal life. Listen, that's unlimited power. Can you think about what eternity is? None of us can because we're finite. We don't understand what eternity is. All we know is it's a long, 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 long time and it's just a never ending time. Eternity past, eternity present. That's where we are right now, eternity future. It's just no limit to it. There's no limit to that time. But, but God is outside of time. He tells time what to do. That's that unlimited power. Tell the seasons when to come. That's that unlimited power. You know, we're in winter right now. The first day of winter was just the other day. But guess what? It don't feel like it. It feels like spring outside. By the time we get out at 12, 30, 1 o'clock, it's going to feel like 60 degrees. In December, Christmas Eve. And my deacon is already sweating and wiping his brow off already because it's kind of warm in here already. But anyway, we're getting ready to go. We want that you would have a wonderful, special, Merry Christmas. And I hope that and pray that you will enter into the new year, 2024, right on the right and on the right foot now. You know, right. Just, you know, make your peace with God. Listen, you got a couple of more days. I wish you do it today. But you, you got a few more, you know, you got a, a less than a week or a, like a week left. Listen, make your peace with God. Get right with him. Cry out to him. Confess your sins. Repent. Repent. Ask the Lord to save you and come and live in your heart. He'll do it. That's the antidote. That is the cure for your sin. Everything has a root, but guess what? It starts with the sin that's inside of us. That could be pride, it could be arrogance, it could be anything. We could, we could be, you know, idolize our achievements and our accomplishments, it could be anything. You know, uh, you know where we live, what we drive, the money we have in the bank, the, the grease we have on the wall, all that stuff can be an idol. And once you make that stuff an idol, 
And that takes the place of your heart where God supposedly, God reserved a spot in your heart specifically for him. Can't nothing else feel it. If you're still chasing stuff, you're chasing your dreams, there's nothing wrong to dream. And there's nothing wrong with you to have goals and aspirations and inspirations. There's nothing wrong with you to, you know, it's nothing wrong to be ambitious. But do not let that be your God. And so we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to close. I hope you start the new year out just right in 2024. I hope that you make your peace with God and that you would tap into this unlimited power. We as believers, as Christians, we can tap into it, <clears throat> excuse me, every minute of the hour, every second of every minute of the hour. We can tap into this unlimited power that he possesses because he wants the best for us. Father knows best. And so as we depart from this place, but not the presence of the Lord, we hope and pray that you will have grace, peace and mercy following you for the rest of the days throughout this 2023 year. In Jesus' name, God bless you.